Hello, everyone. <laughs> nice to meet you. So, I'm Kelly Stamford, a science communicator based in Manchester. I also do collaborative work with the University of Hull as well. So, I, <laughs> leading on from the last presentation, my main thing is using board games, uh, what, <laughs> like card games, to communicate scientific topics. Um, so my background is actually geography rather than infectious diseases, but I have an interest in infectious diseases as well. Um, and I also have a background in art history, um, and I've actually done collaborative projects around that as well, uh, combined in the history of art and how art and science has intersected throughout uh, the past few years. <clears throat> so today I'm going to talk about a bunch of various projects that I've done over the years uh, with different companies, with different groups and different scientists. So the first thing is Resilience, the card game I've designed with the University of Hull and the Energy and Environment Institute. And it's all about communicating flood resilience and flood risk. So because it's such a complex subject and it's such a current subject as well, we wanted to develop this really competitive game, which is also collectible, to get people engaged with learning about the different types of flooding, the different types of uh, flood defence. Uh, I'm basically uh, showing that we can do something about it as well. Uh, so over the past um, few months, I've been designing the graphics for the game, uh, basically been designing how it works, and we've also been doing a study around it as well to prove that it works and prove that art, as well as card games, can be used as an effective means of science communication with the public uh, through different age groups. So we've been taking it around like different locations, so conferences, museums, <coughs> taking it into schools, we've been taking it to universities, uh, and basically we've been having students and the public play this game against each other. So the competitive element makes them learn about the subjects of the game. <laughs> and then afterwards, we do a questionnaire with them. So we do a questionnaire beforehand and after to show that they have indeed learned something. And this is going to go into a international study around this subject uh, to basically comprehensively show that this works. Because beforehand, there's been papers uh, about this subject, but it's not been very conclusive. It's been around opinions and such. Whereas this study, it actually tests the players on their knowledge, which they've got from playing the game. Um, So the methodology is basically setting up these play tests in various locations, getting them to sit down and play against each other. Usually the game can take anywhere from 20 minutes to 40 minutes. It depends uh, how the game starts and how well the players pick it up. Uh, we've also seen some interesting data that suggests women pick up the card game a lot quicker and are better at playing it than the male counterparts, which is very interesting. Um, so that's quite good as well for getting uh, more women in STEM, I guess. Uh, and also another crucial thing about the study is to prove that art has a major effect on the learning side of playing the game, the game actually comes in three different versions. So we've got a full art version, a line art version, and a version that's only like text. And this is mainly, so when we're doing the play tests, we can record how well people play the game, how much they pick up, and how many uh, questions they answer at the end when they're doing the questionnaire. So then we could come to the conclusions whether the text 
is clearer or full art's clearer or maybe even the line art. Uh, here's some people playing the game <laughs> very competitively at uh, University of Manchester. I couldn't stop them. <laughs> they, they wouldn't stop uh, playing the game even though we went over by like an hour when we set up this seminar. <laughs> They wanted to keep on playing it like multiple rounds, and I was like, no, no, <laughs> you're going to get me in trouble. Uh, I have actually done other card games as well, so I collaborated with this company called PacBio in America, the California-based company. And basically, we wanted a series of cards to give out at public events about various uh, pathogens like bacteria, viruses, and um, fungi. Um, and it's basically just to get the public um, like focused on different stuff that can make a mill and how deadly each thing is and basically like give them interesting facts so that they can take away with them from these events. Uh, you probably see some of these illustrations upstairs because they're on display. And I'm also working on my own infectious disease card game in the future. So this will be based around the whole resilience card game model. The data we get from that study will go into developing these further card games around different topics such as infectious diseases and also space and space exploration. Right, so next I'm going to talk about some other projects I've done in the past, which is kind of under... Uh, <laughs> kind of random, but psychom sculptures. <laughs> so my other thing is doing these public art sculptures, which basically combine sculpture and the science, the scientific history of the area where the sculpture is based. So this was the Stenby that I did in 2018 in Manchester. So I did this in collaboration with Arup and Wild and Art. Um, basically, we collaborated together to come up with this design. Uh, it's embellished with scientific facts. It's got like, illustrations from uh, published scientific papers from the area. It's even got some science poetry on it. It's got illustrations of famous scientific uh, figures from the area. And also another thing I did with it was I got the scientific community involved. So what I did was I got 80 scientists from the area to come and actually add their signature to it. So then they could be physically involved with the project and do extra events around the project as well. After it was created over four weeks, we had it sit outside Manchester Oxford Road Station, one of the main stations in Manchester for two months so the public could interact with it. And the response we got was like amazing. Like we had so many pictures over social media of just random people saying how cool this was, how they didn't know about these things that had happened in Manchester throughout history. Like, it's just amazing. People like photographing their kids next to it. I mean, I was actually photographing the sculpture myself. And this family came over, and the kid was like, I want to be a scientist now after having a look at this sculpture. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, here's some pictures of some of the famous faces signing it. So you might recognise Tim O'Brien from... Uh, Jodrell Bank, Daniel George, and the Nobel Prize winner Kostya Novoselov, who uh, isolated graphene and won the Nobel Prize for it, of course. Um, and this is another one that I've done this year, actually. So this one smashed the bee out of the park when it comes to signatures. So we got 127 scientists this time to be a part of this project. Uh, and with this, I had them even more involved. So I actually had them illustrate their science on the cow as well. So if you go around it, you'll see like random illustrations of roots, random like, <laughs> like uh, equations done by physicists, 
their favorite equations just like scrolled around. We had an ice cream scientist write a bunch of ice cream facts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this, this is going to be outside, what's it, Queen's College uh, in Cambridge from the 30th of March. So if you want to head down there and have a look at it, uh, <laughs> it'd be amazing. So the main reason I do these sculptures is it's just a really like, effective way of getting the public to engage with scientific facts and also just get interested in STEM. And another, well, here's some other pictures of it from different angles. This one, we actually got Jocelyn Bell to sign as well as uh, Jane Goodall, so. <laughs> Another reason I do these is the charity side of things. So at the end of their exhibition out on the street, uh, we actually auctioned them off for local charities. So the first one, the Stemby, actually raised 22 grand for homeless charities around Manchester. And I reckon the stem cow is going to probably smash that out of the park in terms of uh, figures. And we've got like a, a wider vision for this where we'll make a sculpture for every city in the UK so it can showcase that area's science and scientific history and science that's being done now in that area of the UK. So then it will eventually make a constellation of the UK's science. These are just some other things I do. So I go to science centres and I'll illustrate a scientific topic. And the main reason for that is it usually attracts people over and then they'll ask about it. And then I can go and explain the science behind the illustration to them. It just seems like a really effective uh, means of getting people interested in a topic they probably wouldn't get interested in beforehand. I also do the sci art workshops around Greater Manchester and schools. So obviously art is lacking in the curriculum at the moment and we have this divide between art and science where science lot would be too scared to interact with art and the art side of things, well art like-minded people might be a bit too scared to go into science on their own accord. So what I do is I combine the two together in these workshops. So what I'll have them do is I'll have them research a topic, like on the computer, find out facts about it and imagery and stuff, and then I have them do a scientific poster, an illustrated one. So they're creating the poster, it's arty, they get to paint everything, but they also annotate it as well. So it's as if they're making a poster which you'd see at a conference, but for only like nine years old. <laughs> um, here's an example of one of them. Uh, and finally, oh, this one's a bit messed up, this one but I'm holding a pint of science event in Manchester this year, which is all around uh, games, art, and how they can be combined with science to communicate various scientific subjects. So we're doing an open call. If you've got like a game you want exhibited as part of this event, either contact me uh, or, I don't know, just uh, pick up like... I've got some business cards uh, at the front desk, you know, the reg registration table. If you pick that up, you've got my details on that, and just drop me an email, and we can probably include it in that event for you guys. Right. Thank you. <laughs>